The Community Coalition on High Speed Rail. Mr. Grindley. Uh, good, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Thank you for inviting us. There are two critical variables as to whether the proposed high speed rail system will meet its financial obligations. The first is ridership, which every financial variable is geared. I think Mrs. Uh, Alexis will, Card will address that a lot better than I can. But note that in every calculation our financial group has ever done, we have used the ridership numbers of the high-speed rail system, whether we believe them or not. Second major variable is the high-speed rail advocates' article of faith that high-speed rail is profitable. No system is, and let me address that. Before you, you have three documents. On top all right, is the testimony it was too long to give. Exhibit 1 is the official position of the International Union of Railways that says national governments build high-speed rail systems and then operate them in the name of society's good. Well, that's truly a unique European perspective. It is completely out of sync with Proposition 1A. Exhibit number two shows that not only the Inspector General of Amtrak, the Congressional Research Service, and the AFL-CIO disabuse the notion of the IUR that they are profitable, but that, in fact, the three operators of the largest systems, France, Spain, and Japan, in sworn testimony in front of Congress, said, we take two to three billion dollars a year of operating subsidies. It's highlighted in that. You don't have to believe me, just read the congressional record. Remember that two billion dollar number. Since time is limited, let me give you three little presentations. The first concerns ticketing and profits. This column represents a 43 cent per passenger mile cost in Europe. We studied six of them, that's the average. I actually rode from Madrid to Barcelona on September the 24th for 42.6 cents a mile. This is the 81 cents, whoa, that's shaky. This is the 81 cents, uh, excuse me, this is the 19 cents per mile for the $81 LA to San Francisco cost, right? 19 cents per mile versus 43 cents a mile. And this is their supposed profit they're going to make. Now tell me, if this column is 40% higher than that column, how are you going to make any profit? All your revenue comes from tickets. Second, all right, we're going to talk about debt here, because this thing is a mountain of debt. I want to introduce you to my little friend here, Mr. Lego Man, right? The little bit of white down here is what the feds are giving you, all right? The ICS is what the California people will pay back in interest. All of this is debt. There's no freebies in here. This little bit gets you up to the IOS North. You've built up debt to there. This gets you to the B2B portion, and this gets you through phase one. This gets you through phase two. Phase two gets all six cities, and that's what the voters were promised. But after phase two gets built, the debt begins to spiral up and up and up. That's really great banking technique, but it does keep going up through the year 2055, which is what the authority has projected out to be. That is what I would call debt overhang, and here my little man's going to jump off the scale. Okay. My final piece of graphics is walk softly and carry a big stick. <laughs> All right. This is to get the point across that this is a lot of money. Down here in the gold, yeah, there you go. That, may I stand with your permission? Down here in the goal is what your state now services as debt. All right, it's about $7.5 billion a year for $90 billion of debt already incurred by this state. By the year 2050, that will be in the range of $452 billion, this plus that, okay, projecting a 3% growth per year, just like the authority has. And that is without high-speed rail. The red part is the layover of high-speed rail with no operating margin. Now remember, we are calculating using their numbers and giving the high-speed rail authority the benefit of the doubt they at least break even, right? And we know they don't. So remember the $2 billion. You may ask why the little golden ring up there is not for getting married to the high-speed rail authority. The golden ring represents the pile of debt the state will incur in building this system if the federal government gives them $20 billion more. Does it seem to decrease the amount of debt much? I don't think so. 
Now, good banking is a great practice, and they have managed to put off the debt servicing for a long, long time. But, gentlemen, it does not create good public policy. Thank you very much. Uh, no applause, please. Uh, next. Uh,